All right, next batch of articles I got for y'all. Let me see. Let me see. Restore all. Um. Okay. Younger generations can't accept losing. Tekken's Harada on fighting games may need to change to accommodate. Uh, there's definitely a healthy dose of a certain back in my day theme and part of a recent discussion between Bandai Namco's Harada and PlayStation's Yoshida. Tekken 8 still has a little of that fresh out of the package smell to it and so Harada has been taking opportunities to promote it as well as discuss the future of the franchise. I seen a clip on TikTok the other day of Tekken Tag. I've never been like a super Tekken guy. I, you know, I'm a, more of like a Street Fighter and Soul Calibur person, but I like Tekken. Um, but my favorite Tekken is the original Tekken Tag. The Tekken Tag 2 was like kind of a balancing. Uh, but my favorite Tekken was Tekken Tag. I hope they make a Tekken Tag 3 and like implement some of those Tekken 8 mechanics into it. That'd be fun. Um, when, when Yoshida asked about the latter, Harada had a fairly specific answer clearly already tumbling about in his mind. We're going to need to appeal to the younger generations and they don't view losing in competition like older folks do. Um, Harada describes his generation, he's currently 53, as one that grew up with a sense of a matter of fact of comp competition when it came to many routine practices such as applying for school or interviewing for a job. As such, he reasons that people from this generation tend to prefer more definitive black and white outcomes. He notes that younger people don't seem to have the same relation to competition, however, and aren't as akin to joining contests that determine such clear winners and losers. Most young people nowadays are the opposite. They're clear, they're rarely eager to engage in one-on-one -on -one showdowns, he starts his answer, because fighting games pitch you by yourself against a single opponent. You have to accept all the responsibility if you lose. Tekken Tag 2 was great, but flopped, unfortunately. No, nah, it, had, it had some, it flopped, but it had some, um, what's the word? It, it had some balancing issues. You had to learn like 150 characters and some shit. You said blame LeBron. I think it's that uh I I I halfway agree with what he's saying. I get where he's going. Cause I I, I agree and disagree. And why I say that is like the competitive gamers, I wouldn't say that about them. Like these sweat ass gamers that have ruined gaming, that doesn't apply to them. But maybe as a whole, probably yeah. Like the younger generation, I do I do think that like um the boomer in me is saying. It is a lot of this everybody gets a trophy mentality going around, and I think that fucks people up in the head because then I think I think it's important for a kid to learn how to just as as important as to win is important to learn how to gracefully lose and learn how to take lessons from things. And like I, I can see where he's coming from. Um, he meant the sales of Tag Two were bad. It's known that it's flopped so hard it almost ended the series. Uh, okay, yeah, you need to learn how to lose. Uh, but a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. It's not to say all people below a certain age simply can't deal with the responsibility of losing, but Harada does suppose that a significant percentage of the younger gamer base increasingly prefers games where the burden of loss can be shared. I'm damn iPad kids, bruh. Uh, I disagree. Kids seem like they're being tortured by everything these days, particularly social media. What? What is, what is, what is, what does that have to do? on your ignorant black ass. You kind of lost me on that one. What does that have to do with the conversation? What does that have to do? Uh, yo, shout out to Jay Silk with the sub. Appreciate it. Um, would I ever let my kids beat me? Fuck no. <laughs> you gonna have to earn that shit. I beat. I beat my. <laughs> let me. Let me. I beat my girl's ass in video games. She don't get to beat me either. Fuck no, bro. <laughs> I had to make sure I worded that right. Like we play Tekken together all the time. Like we have private matches and before I, cause I taught her how to play Street Fighter and Tekken, like given like basic, like fighting game shit. Uh, fuck no, you gotta beat me, bro. And then guess what? But I, on the, on the opposite, on the opposite end of the spectrum, if I teach you how to play a game, I also clout you up. Like, oh, you getting better. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I get like, I got, Listen, I, don't, I only get mad at fuck random fuck niggas in, in rank, but like people that I'm cool with, you know, the in the video games was key. Yeah, I had to catch myself for a second because I know even though it's very clear what I'm talking about in conversation, somebody could clip that shit out of context. Oh, look at this black guy. <laughs> Glad you ordered that correct because they would have clipped you. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, I kind of half agree with this. Um, what's up, buddy? You need a hug or something, dude? Uh, da -da 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 -da. You gotta earn this whooping. My dad, girlfriend, best friend will never play games with me again. 
handing out a three piece and a biscuit. Gotta play these games together. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, little kids get an ego when they start to win. Yeah, it, it makes the win feel better. Like when you work for it, like it don't feel the same when you just give it to somebody. So now nah, you got to work for it. Like maybe, maybe if I see they going hard and I'm actually having to try a little bit, maybe I let them win. Like, you know, but like just straight up, let me win off rip, let them win off rip. Nah, fuck no. Just so they can get that confidence boost. But fuck no. The problem with giving everyone trophies is they're fostering undeserved egos. Yeah. Egos are bad period. But yeah ding 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 also what that dude said earlier yeah you lost me on that point you were trying to make with the social media thing and like torturing them like i i get what you're saying in a sense that like um like we as humans we're not supposed to see so many people's opinions and energy you're not supposed to take that much energy in especially as a kid like look how much it's fucking up people's brains as adults imagine what it's doing to a kid that's why you got to keep your kid off the fucking ipad I agree what you're saying like there. I just don't understand what you mean in the context of the conversation, which is about video games and competition. I think it's important for people to lose. If I didn't lose, if I didn't lose a whole bunch, uh, you know, you might have like an undeserving ego or you might not, you, you might be real toxic or some shit like that. The everyone wins a trophy mentality is in reaction to kids having actual real worries and problems compared to my generation where the future looked clear and safe. I don't know if I agree with that. Are you trying to say that like um, basically life is hard right now, so we're just going to give them a trophy because I don't know about that one. Da -da -da. I'm happy to lose. That means I still have progress to be made. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's really about learning to shift your progress. Half glass, half empty. I don't know. Me personally, I haven't seen that. I don't know if I agree with that one, but to each his own. I think any pride that is undeserved is an ego. Yeah, Vegeta. It's a doomer mentality. Yes, it's an overreaction to kids being stressed. You need to get your kids off the fucking iPad, bro. Shit is frying people's brains. I remember when I was when I used to work with kids. Um, you had a TV or a computer screen in the room, and every once in a while, you could show them like a kid show. Like, let's say you needed to set the table for lunch or something. You could show them something to keep them busy while you set the room the table or whatever but um it was limited to like 30 minutes a day when you were working with like toddlers nowadays like there's no fucking limit these kids be on these xboxes these goddamn uh ipads all day your brain is fried all that damn blue light uh wrestling taught me how to take l's no that's facts that's facts i just play locally among friends and be happy pretty much yeah, it's more of a lack of rewards for the effort you put in. Doesn't usually represent the outcome. Like everything is diluted and oversaturated. <laughs> Shonic and Shonic news. <laughs> the problem is like the teenagers and young adults basically seeing they have no hope for a secure retirement, no hope to buy a house. Oh, and you're saying that the result is like people are just allowing them to win. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's a deeper, that's a deeper issue. Niggas got to get out and vote. Not the teenagers, but you know, the people who can for things that matter. That's a whole different conversation. Um, I would still want my kid to know how to gracefully lose. I think that's important because as a parent, I would imagine it's very embarrassing if like, uh, I don't know if, they, I don't know if anybody's played sports. When I played sports at the end of the season, they would always have like a sports banquet and all the teams of that season would come together. I remember... When was wrestling? Was it in the fall? Whatever all the fall sports were, basketball. I remember bas basketball was there. Wrestling, was it soccer? And something else for the girls. You come together and you have a sports banquet at the end and then like trophies were given out. Most improved player, MVP. You know what I'm talking about, right? And like, I remember, I think it was my sophomore or freshman year. I think I, no, it was my sophomore year. I won most improved wrestler. When I wanted a, a different award, like I would imagine it'd be an embarrassing if you didn't win an award or you won an award that you didn't want and then you, you just spaz out in front of people. That's what I'm talking about. Like, that's embarrassing, bro. What the fuck? I deserve better. Fuck all you. <laughs> like, yo, chill, bro. Chill. Let's see. Shonic movies to be an Avenger level threat or events says franchise producer what the fuck sonic niggas are funny 2024 is going to be a big year for shonic 
Not only is Sonic Shadow Generation landing on the Switch in autumn, but fans will also be treated to Sonic the Hedgehog 3 on December 20th and a dedicated Knuckles series later this month on April 26th. Regarding, yeah, the photos of Sonic on Thanos' head. Regarding the latter, the franchise producer Toby Archer recently spoke to Pace Magazine to describe how the Knuckles series came about and how the studio is leveraging these smaller projects to enable Sonic movies to be Avenger-level events. The fact that he's using Avenger-level threat for a fucking Sonic movie is funny. But two, it also spells out a problem that I pointed out in the second movie. If you've seen the second movie, it's it ends wild i don't even care because if you haven't seen it whatever you, you're not gonna see it at the end when he goes supersonic i remember telling my girl i went like super nerdy i was like it was cool he went supersonic but i felt like if they really wanted this to be a franchise it might have been a little too early for him to go supersonic because now they're gonna have the same exact problem that dragon ball z had once you elevate and you stop making it about technique and you know the power of friendship working together it's just a power scaling thing it kind of waters down the, yeah, it's a power creep. It kind of waters down the writing. And I told her, I was like, they can do one more movie. And if they end it at a trilogy, the Sonic franchise will be good, but this is Hollywood. I don't, I don't know if it's going to end at a three. If it goes to four, five, six, it's going to get out of fucking control. And it's going to be just terrible writing. It's going to be fucking Dragon Ball Super kind of. <laughs> that's why dragon super is mad to me it's just like a lot of creep or whatever so the fact that we're on the third movie and he's talking about avengers level threat like why can't sonic just be why does sonic need to be an avengers movie this nigga eats chili dogs and runs track and field like what are we talking about here just capping on that title tbh let's see what the producer does. uh so the producer goes on to say we got really excited about the idea of expanding our characters in our world into television specifically because it gives us a platform to really do character studies we knew that with shadow coming into sonic 3 and some of the bigger things that we want to do the sonic franchise on the movie side is going to be these avenger level events they're going to be these big exciting stories that have a lot of different characters and so what television did for us, it gave us time to go into more supporting characters in depth and really built them out in cool ways. It's literally about to become, it's about to become Dragon Ball. They're going to make Tales and Cream series for something. I wouldn't be surprised. Coming, coming to Tubi, Tales and Cream. Like, don't know, who wants to fucking see that? We need a Sonic and Bluey crossover. That would be fire. Dead ass. I don't know, man. They want a cash grab to sell toys. Oh yeah, I can see, I can see Super Sonic selling supersonic and super shadow tell like selling really well uh give me sonic 06 the fuck sonic 06 remastered like i said uh i think three will probably be good because two was good but if they keep going past i i hope they ended it a trilogy but we know how hollywood is if they keep going i think it's gonna get really bad at four uh yo shout out to senpai with the sub appreciate it we need a rouge show <laughs> Rouge steals the show. I'm good off that, bro. I'm good off that. In a Sonic Riders movie, isn't that how the Knuckles show? Isn't that Knuckles show out too? No, it comes out April 26th at the end of the month. I think the fact that Hollywood highlights how a lot of directors are just scared to follow the main script—it's annoying. <laughs> Will she? Will she? Sega wants all the money they can get. They need it. Yeah, they struggling. And social media news, apparently TikTok is getting closer to launching an Instagram competitor. Who's ready for more social media? If your brains weren't fried enough, here we go. Man, fuck TikTok. Nah, for real. Let me tell you why. The clips I've been uploading, I, my all my clips have been getting um, like shadow, not shadow. Well, I guess shadow ban is the word. And the only reason I know is because like I went into the settings and it said that your... Like my last five videos I uploaded, it says in bright red, your video is not eligible for the for you page. You said niggas steal all your clips, which is funny in itself because and so so uh, like my last five clips that I uploaded, it said they're not eligible for the for you page, so they haven't been performing well. And then when I click to see why it's not eligible for the for you page, it says because the videos are low quality and something about a QR bar or some shit like that. But the main thing is the videos are low quality. Now, the videos before that were going viral or semi-viral. They weren't low quality before, and they were stream highlights. They were edited. Now it's low quality. But then you have pages that are stealing my content, and they're going viral. The algorithm don't know what they want to do. I got a vinyl page, and one of your videos showed up. I, do, I don't look at gaming stuff on there. I'll take that. That's promo, baby. Low quality? I don't know. 
TikTok is planning to release a new photo sharing app that could take on Instagram. In a notification sent to users, TikTok says it's launching a new app for photos called TikTok Notes. What? As reported earlier by TechCrunch, the notification says it will share existing and future public TikTok photo posts to TikTok Notes while also giving users the ability to opt out. A new photo.tiktok.com URL spotted by TechCrunch also briefly appeared online with a prompt to open a post in the TikTok Notes app. Judging by the image included below, it looks like you'll be able to write a caption alongside your photo. In a statement to TechCrunch, TikTok says it's exploring ways to empower our community to create and share their creativity with photos and text in a dedicated space for those formats, but didn't say when it plans to release the app. The Verge reached out to TikTok with a request for more information, but didn't immediately hear back. Yeah, y'all yeah, excited to, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I read this, this headline this morning. I'm like, oh brother, another fucking, another goddamn app I got to download. I don't even take pictures. I'm not, I ain't gonna lie. I take one picture a year. Y'all know the rules. Yes, because the algorithm thinks we're just re up, re uploading, even though we're the main count. It happened to my other client too. Oh, so it's not my, my, my shit is low quality it's thinks i'm stealing my own content yeah then yeah just watermark my shit whatever as long as it goes viral somewhere <laughs> that's fucking funny and that's especially funny because my account is verified and on tiktok you can't pay for a check mark i had to actually talk to somebody from tiktok so somehow my account is getting labeled as stolen content and i'm verified that's fucking funny tiktok is overrated but i give it credit because you can learn things on there yeah, I give it credit because you can learn things on there. And there's like funny videos. But in terms of making money, it's not a good place to be. Last time I took a picture was at the military ball and only because my girlfriend wanted to take one. Yeah, that's the only time I really take pictures. Like if we go, I think the last time I took picture was like probably Valentine's Day. And that's because my girl took me to Nintendo World at Universal Studios. So I was like, oh, let me take some pictures. Like when we're, when we're doing cool things, I'll take pictures because I think it's important to document what you do. Because as you get older, you don't want to look back and not have any memories. Um, just a word of advice. Uh, trust me on that one. Uh, but like every day, like taking selfies and shit, you niggas weird. I stand on that shit. <laughs> Uh, I made a new page and compared to my old page with the 40k gets 10 times the viewership. Well, there's a thing on TikTok if when you make a new account for the first 30 days, it boosts your account. And they do that for psychological reasons. They want everybody to feel like they can make it. So they basically, you know, boost your account a little bit. And then once that first month is up, good luck, nigga. It's, it's to get you hooked, basically. Free samples. Look it up. My last picture was 2021. I'm not photogenic at all. Damn, nigga. That was three years ago. I'm not gonna lie. Take a picture, bro. Take a picture. <laughs> Telling everyone what you eat every day is always strange to me. No, the strangest shit to me is like Instagram accounts where like they have selfies and every selfie looks exactly the same. I'm like, why are you uploading this? If you want to upload cool things you're doing, that's one thing. <laughs> but it's literally just a, a Instagram like, dude, if you don't delete your fucking page. Oh, shit. Do -do 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 -do. New company, Gaggle. <laughs> Gaggle, guys. Launches to license content to influencers. Gaggle, a new company that licenses and distributes TV shows to content creators for them to watch with their communities on social platforms, has been founded by former Twitch and TV executives. Oh. Thanks for the resub. You've got one loyal. Uh, yo, shout out to Higgle, Higgy. Higgy J with the sub, appreciate it. And shout out to the 600 people we got in here. If you're new, hit the follow button. Gaggle aims to help content owners cater to Gen Z's audience, which has seen a decline in linear TV viewing by taking TV content to the platforms they use, presented by their social personalities they know and trust. Translation, television as a traditional medium is not getting the viewership it once got. But that does not mean Gen Z is not interested. It just means Gen Z, whether do they rather do watch alongs on Twitch and YouTube. They rather Gen Z would rather watch a nigga watch a TV show than watch the TV show. This is crazy. This is fucking crazy. Uh, Gaggle technology allows the host to combine their commentary with the original footage and allow viewers to play along, transforming the original show into a full interactive experience video game via video game functionality. Fremantle US is the first content owner to use the new service with the price is white right 
the Barker era. The show has been distributed to Twitch creators Cleo Thomas, Alexa, you know, I know Cleo, that's the Holes guy, Peter Park, uh, and Eternal Enigma and Bridges Case, who can watch and play along with their audiences. So translation, this company saw a whole, saw an opportunity, because for those of you unaware, a lot of Twitch streamers, their content is them basically just reacting to Gordon Ramsay and other reality TV shows on stream, but that's not legal. The only reason they get away with that shit is because they haven't been stricken down. So basically what this company wants to do is reach out to actual television distributors and they want to make it legal so you can sleep easy at night. Because at any point, and this happens every three to six months, at least once a year, Twitch streamers will start crying, guys, I got a copyright strike. I can't believe, I can't believe Universal struck me for watching the Batman on my stream. I didn't know, I didn't know. I wasn't supposed to watch Bruce Wayne. How was I supposed to know? I'm just a little streamer. I'm just a little streamer. I don't know what copyright is. But let a nigga steal your content. You'll copyright strike him. Anyways, um, yo, shout out to Nazo with the sub. Appreciate it. So basically, they see an opportunity to take advantage of this shit. So sponsored or approved content to react to? Pretty much. Um, I don't even know if it's necessarily sponsored. It sounds like they're trying to build a database. They're reaching out to all these distributors and saying like, hey, content creators like watching your shit here. It'll bring viewership in. Maybe we can work something out. Uh, and in exchange, I would imagine there's probably going to be some rules and stipulations to this. Like, hey, if you're reacting to our shows, make sure you let people know this show comes on Friday night at 8 p.m. or some shit like that. I don't know. Um, so far, results have seen four and a half times more engagement versus the creator's regular content. I wonder why. And long view times of up to 45 minutes per viewer has occurred. Gaggle will soon launch Family Feud um, and expand to other live social platforms. We're excited to partner with Gaggle to boost interest in our properties like Price is the Right, VP. Man, they need to get like Premiere shit on here like Shogun or something. Their innovative approach has enhanced viewing experiences and sparked exceptional engagement. We're thrilled with these results and eager to see their impact on our other titles. Some Twitch streamer does some stupid shit and weaponizes their audience to defend their dumbass behavior. Yeah, it's because the audience doesn't know any better. Does this include live sports? This would be fire for live sports. Like, I would like to be able to watch. Like, it was cool when we watched G League games together because Twitch allowed it. It'd be nice to watch, like, NBA get games on stream. That'd be fire. Uh... We're delighted to be working in partnership with I'm worried that Adam Harris is also the co-founder and just some bullshit. Gaggle, how I sign up for Gaggle? Gaggle. Isn't Amazon getting rid of watch parties now? Yeah, there's a lane open. Gaggle.tv, reimagining TV. Take your content in. We're a TV 3.0 business that licenses TV and movie content to creators. So basically, I would imagine you probably sign up for this shit. And then if they accept your application. You get whitelisted for certain TV shows to react to. It's all around win. I mean, this is kind of like the natural evolution of things. And it looks like they got like different uh, join gaggle. You can join the shit. Uh, I'm going to sign up for it. I don't really react like that, but why not get whitelisted, right? I was going to clown on this, but this sounds hella cool. Yeah, it, honestly, it's good if you're interested in it. I'm, I'm going to drop the link in the chat. It protects the content creator, so I'm not mad at it. I'm going to sign up for it later. Just in, just in case you wanted to do something like that. But who wants to watch 30-year-old 30, 30 Price is Right episodes? You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. That's like saying who's buying DVDs for Snow White or who's watching rerun. There's a reason why. So there's a reason why um, getting to 100 episodes on a TV show is so clouded. And it's because when you get to 100 episodes, usually it's easier to sell it into syndication. Syndication DVD deals. Uh, constant reruns on television and streaming services. It, it makes money. It's it's royalties. So, uh, so it's like, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. Yeah, this, yeah, start reacting to TV so we can farm this content. Pretty much. Be like, I, 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 I'm whitelisted. Start small and then build up from there. That too, right, Koopa? They're, they're not going to be able, because this is a new business, they're not going to be able to get the new stuff right off rip. They got to have a proof of concept. So these TV businesses are probably like, oh, here, you can have our old stuff. Let them react to that. We'll see how it does. And if it performs well, this is a starting point. Most likely you're going to get newer stuff. So, either way, I would say this is a win. This is a win. It protects the content creator and it helps the distributor. There's really no bad for this. And whatever. Uh, yeah, we can watch One Piece. All 1,000 episodes lets us react to old. Yeah, like that. that's like making the argument like um, 
Like, I hate when niggas be like, oh, that song is old. So? Purple Rain is a good song. Like, what are you talking about, nigga? It, it, it be them niggas on YouTube making top 10 drill rappers of 2024. Them niggas, they be having them dumbass. Like, so if it's old, who cares? It's still good. It can still be entertaining. <laughs> uh tv's hurting for viewers anyway and yeah that's the point to kind of reinvigorate it through through creators top 10 drill rappers of 2022 i'm gonna hear that shit new blockchain handheld announced this was interesting will likely cost 500 dollars. the bit boy like new script <laughs> new crypto scam alert new crypto scam alert <laughs> um ords games has revealed a new retro inspired handheld gaming console what did you link I'm sorry, but I thought this was hilarious and I wanted to share it with you, Ronan. What did you link? Wrestling. You're banned. You're banned. You know I don't care nothing about no oiled up, baby oiled up Thanks niggas, bro. You know I don't care. Money for TBH to cop a brick from Dr. Eggman. Yo, shout out to Black Sage with the sub. I don't care if it's Monday Night Raw or Helen, Helen a Cell, whatever, Summer Slam, whatever the fuck that shit is, nigga. I do not care. Your Res resub is respect. Cool, but honestly, hey, there's only one I'm not even knocking. If you like it, I get it. WrestleMania was all over my timeline, but it's not for me, Ronan. I don't want to watch niggas roll around in mud. I don't care if I show speed was on there. It's not going to change my opinion. It's still baby oiled up niggas DDT in each other and just doesn't do anything for me, bro. <sighs> Let's talk about NFT shout scams. Out to that nigga <laughs> in the chat for resubscribing. Yo, shout out the true, the true dunes with the sub. Appreciate it. Real ass nigga for that, my nigga. Uh, Ors Games has revealed a new retro-inspired handheld gaming console that will allegedly let players earn bitcoins while playing games that are connected to the larger blockchain network. This shit, get the fuck! You get to earn a bitcoin from playing Game Boy. All right, buddy. The console isn't out out yet, but will likely cost around. Why does this cost five hundred dollars? What's in this? According to the, <laughs> come on, this is this is I'm calling it right now. This right here is the scam. Oh, if you play the games, you can earn Bitcoins. You're not going to earn a Bitcoin. They're just, <laughs> they're just trying to get $500 out of you. Sure. In 2024, the new hot thing among most large tech companies in Silicon Valley. Yeah, get to it. Revealed on April 5th, the BitBoy One is an upcoming handheld gaming console that is designed to also be a crypto wallet. You can just download a crypto wallet for free if you want to get into this. It will also be able to play classic games, assuming you provide the ROMs. It's an emulator. Oh my God. And it will let you earn Bitcoin cryptocurrency by playing specific blockchain play to earn games. So it doesn't matter that it can emulate. You have to play their specific shitty ass games, bro. This shit don't got Super Mario. Super Mario 3. It got Roger Rabbit 3. Shit is a Super Mario 3 ROM hack with Roger Rabbit in it. If the device looks familiar, that's because it seems to be heavily based on the similar retro devices like the Mio Mini and the Ambernick R35. And that's what I say, it looks like the uh, the RG35. And if it is, this shit is dirt cheap. I'm kind of new to your stream. I'm here to react to Ronan's post. Is there some kind of lore with this guy? Nah, he's just annoying. Um, <laughs> welcome to the stream. <laughs> This nigga, he's just this nigga's just a yapper, bro. <laughs> hey, but he's the hey, I, he's a dedicated yapper, bro. <laughs> the Ronin, that's fucking funny. Are you from Hokage Highlights? Are you from the YouTube? This nigga said, "What's the lore?" Now it makes me wonder how many people are watching Hokage Highlights and are new to the channel and never watched me before. Like, what? Who is this Ronin guy? <laughs> what is the Ronin lore? We got to come up with Ronin. What's your lore, Ronin? What's your lore? You make it up. I think, okay, here's the Ronan lore. Ronan, Ronan is a guy from Cleveland, Ohio, who claims to have worked at GameStop, but he recently got laid off. So now he spends all his time in my chat dropping links and talking about WWE. That's the lore. WWE. Um, Back to this shit. In fact, the BitBoy One shares a lot of the same internal specs as those popular mini retro handhelds. However, these days, the devices cost between 60 to 100 dollars meanwhile ords games tells game beat that bitboy one will li likely cost 500 dollars this device is deeply rooted inside of bitcoin said the person behind the device entrepreneur this is so this is how i know this is a scam this shit is so disingenuous you're not getting a bitcoin if if this is even real 
you're not getting a Bitcoin for fucking playing Super Mario 2 on an emulator. You're getting a percentage of a Bitcoin, and it's going to be a percentage of a percentage. It's going to be like 0.001 or whatever. You're not getting a full Bitcoin because Bitcoin, last time I checked, it was up. How much is a whole Bitcoin worth? One Bitcoin is worth $71,000. Nigga, get the fuck out of here. And this is how they get people. And this is why I said this itself is the is the scam. They charge you $500 because if you read the article and don't read between the lines, it tells you you get a Bitcoin. Oh, if I spend $500 to play a uh, fucking Kirby Dreamland, I can get $71,000 in exchange. Oh, but psh. please don't fall for this shit. Uh, who gives a fuck fuck this shit i'm not reading the rest of this is that a zone three player fuck this shit this goofy ass shit bro du, du, du. all these get rich schemes but no get no yeah update your job res hey, niggas want to do everything but get a job bro get a job um a 430 dollar markup on aliexpress handheld exactly this is some shit you can get off alibaba for like 50 bucks bro i've been grinding for my bitcoin let's get into the sub box that's all the articles i got for you unless somebody got it for you i finally come to realize not to share any wrestling content i finally seen the light i mean it only took you 500 links but i appreciate it ronan you finally got it bro you finally got it jobs ain't cool bitcoin bro doom, doom, doom. All right, what we got? What we got in the show box? What we got in the show box? I'm trying to make it hot. Destiny 2, the final shape. Who is playing Destiny 2? The... <laughs> Have y'all seen this nigga got exposed? Oh, y'all can't see it. Oh, shit. Hold up. <laughs> Where is it at? That nigga from Fresh and Fit. Was it Fresh got exposed? Have y'all seen that shit? That shit is funny. I've been saying it. I've been saying it. Beware of the false prophets. Shit had me crying. If y'all haven't seen it, the dark skin one, which is I've been, I, I, I don't know. I don't have any issue with them per se because I don't want anybody to think I have beef with them. But I've been saying and specifically I think Myron is who he says he is to a degree, but Fresh always, he always seemed like a simp to me. And he got, he got, he got some random girl pregnant. And then he was trying to claim that that's not his girl. But then some pictures came out on the timeline. He was hanging out with the girl and the girl met his mom. I'm like, bruh. And niggas still be watching this shit. Listen, like, you're not living up to your alpha male lifestyle. <laughs> You're not living up to your alpha male life. I said, beware of, like I said, I said like a year ago, y'all don't find it weird. Everybody's an alpha male all of a sudden. Like, come on, man. Yeah, alpha child support. Oh my God. They said he'll, women, he, he'll women met his, what? What do you say? That's not your girl. That's your wife. Yeah, there's like text messages coming out talking, saying like, I love you and all. Like, just claim it. That's your girl, bro. It's okay. That's okay. Man, is there, oh, here we go. We got a, oh, that's a knuckles behind there. There's nothing in the sub box. Nothing of interest anyway. What is this, Fear the Deer? Had to resub for the premium content. I appreciate it, Mexican m, m Is the iPhone illegal? Man, this shit, 13 minutes. What is this about? They just don't practice what they preach. Who knew? Yeah, they selling you a message that they don't even follow. That's insane. Uh, maybe I had to come to the Twitch channel, become a subscriber. That's funny. Yeah, what up, Frost? <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, the scientist who co coined the term alpha wolf spent the rest of his life trying to tell the world he was wrong. Yeah, I heard that like that's not even like a real thing. Mutant boxing league. What the fuck? You'd be surprised how about Destiny 2 now that Destiny 2 is free. It's booming. It's about a Apple, lawsuit between Apple and the U.S. government. What's the gist of it, bro? That shit, 13 minutes. What's the lawsuit? I, I can't find nothing. All right, let's see. New lens, and my lens. Dude's paying 20K to be, I seen that. No, I think I think I read his 10K. For those of you who don't know what he's talking about, apparently there's an alpha male boot camp. You could pay like 10 to 20K for niggas to basically yell at you. Basically, it's fake military boot camp. And, but the thing is, it only lasts a week. It's like 10K. And then you get like a certificate saying you're an alpha male at the end or some shit like that. 
I'm like, bro, just go to the military if you want to get yelled at like that. Like, what the fuck? At least you get to say you're a soldier at the end. This is crazy. Only work yeah, being a loser is free. They paying for it. Vertical integration. Or if I build new headphones crazy behavior, and my headphones only work. Hey, hold up, yo. I need to get a snack, man. I'm fucking hungry. Oh, oh I got to Hold up. Uh, matter of fact, I got to feed my dog, too. It's 8 o'clock. I'll be right back. I got to feed my puppy. Relaxation without any explanation. No time for relaxation. Go, 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 go quick. Fuck you, bitch. Like, go, 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 go. I'm fighting a bu burglar? No, I was feeding my dog. What the fuck? I can't feed my dog. Y'all want my nigga? You want my nigga? Y'all want my nigga to starve? What the fuck? Uh, all right, let me watch this shit. With I'm about my, to my snack. cable. I got pudding. Sugar free pudding. That's vertical integration. Now, if I build a new smartwatch, and my smartwatch only works with my smartphone, be careful, that might be illegal. That's a bit of an oversimplification. I guess school got a pudding cup. Let's talk about it. So this is a developing story and will continue to develop for years, but I, I feel was like it all comes down to something that I've at least noticed in talking to all these big companies, all these very public, multi-billion dollar companies, they always have two reasons for any public facing statement that they make. There's the reason for the public and then there's 
the real reason. So there was just some news this past week of the U.S. No, US US Apple. suing Apple, saying that they are an illegal monopoly in the United States, the iPhone specifically. Now, whenever there's legal proceedings, obviously things- They said, we need more do 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 I won't even pretend- The to government do wants more do 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 This is also interesting to me because of all the stuff with the things that we talk about every day, with just smartphones and gadgets. And Droid course, army rise up. US specific thing. Like, they, obviously they're being sued by the US, but also their dominance, Apple, the iPhone is the most popular in the US. So I think these are some numbers we should keep in mind. In the US, the iPhone is at like 60% market share, and it's even way higher, up near 90% up, with young people. Like it is ridiculously dominant. But worldwide, the iPhone is at about a 25% market share. So the iPhone is specifically trending towards a monopoly in the United States. I gotta argue that's more of a cultural thing though. Like what is the government, I'm gonna listen to them, but what can the government do? Americans like iPhones. Like there are literally a large pool of people that will not entertain you for a date if you don't have an iPhone. Like the moment they see them green bubbles, ugh, they got blocked. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying it is a thing. So here's where it gets really <laughs> interesting. I would like to live in this analogy for this video, which is you've heard about people that describing just happened Apple's to me a few ecosystem times. as a walled garden before. This could not be more true, right? There's this really, really nice beautiful luscious garden and in the middle of that garden is the iphone and it has these really tall thick walls all the way around it so in an ideal world right you are just picking between different options for a product based on its merits based on its features so you just look at the whole lineup and you go yeah i like this one the best and that's if, how you if make they fix choice, the green right? and the photo quality i'd have a but samsung with this one the claim is the facetime Apple would give it away making it really really difficult once you've chosen theirs to ever switch to anything else. So with this analogy again, it's really the walls of the garden that we have the issue with. So I'll give you, I'll do two examples. So take mm. the Apple Watch. Right? So it's not the fact that it's successful. It's literally the green bubbles is the issue. <laughs> it's the fact that it's a wall guard, it's the green bubbles. Right? This is and, other, and other stuff. In the Department of Justice's 88 page PDF that they've submitted, the, the iPhone, and the Apple Watch work perfectly well together and only together. It's a feature, it's by design, Get that's to how it, they Kinko. Are. So two parts of that are sketchy. One is the Apple Watch works Delicioso. really well with the iPhone in a way that no other smartwatch can. And two, the Apple Watch does not work with any other smartphone. So look, I don't think it's a surprise that when Apple built a watch, they gave it all kinds of integrations with the iPhone so you can see them working perfectly together. You can see and dismiss your notifications. You can reply to messages, track your fitness. You can even use it as a shutter for your iPhone's camera. All these features that they just plug right into the iPhone. They work great. And I think that's even what Apple would tell people. They would agree like this is how we made it so that they work amazingly well together. This is vertical integration. It's awesome. But there's also but. the real reason. Because the truth is now, if you try to use any other smartwatch with the iPhone, you just don't get nearly as many of those useful features from being super well integrated. If you try to use like a Garmin smartwatch, for example, you don't get the viewfinder for the camera. You don't get the fitness tracking through. So basically like the Apple is not, not only is it a walled off, it's a walled off garden that's not playing well with other devices, basically. I see what he's saying. That, that is kind of illegal, I believe. Apple Fitness. You don't get quick replies. You don't get Im even image previews for your text messages. You don't even get to choose which apps show you notifications. It's just all or nothing. So, so if you choose said Apple's iPhone, competitively successful. They nah, they're, they're upset that there's no compatibility. They're making it so nobody can compete with them. So when you're looking for a smartwatch to buy, there's kind of only really one. Because this isn't the case. Is that That's the reason I like my Fitbit more than my Apple Watch, because it's so compatible with Apple. It doesn't wall itself off. Uh, like my Fitbit does everything the Apple Watch does. The only difference is it's like $200 cheaper and the battery lasts all week on one charge. Fledged option, which is the Apple Watch. This is also true. So shout out to Tariq with the sub. Uh, appreciate it. Subscribed. AirPods, yeah, the government wants competition. Air tags and various other things in Apple's crime. ecosystem the because they all are is the right when you have an arms. iPhone and work super well I with it. Swear but on work Maria's life, horribly or not at all when you don't. So that is part of the. That's the walls around the ecosystem.
that make it like really you can buy Air AirPods, but you can't use all the features without an iPhone. Pretty much. I believe because if you now want to switch from the iPhone to the Android phone, you're not just switching phones. You have to now get a new phone and a new watch and new headphones and a new tracker and all this stuff because they all worked so well with the or uh because I know this this is what they got in trouble for in the EU too with the um with the lightning cable. Like every phone, every phone in Android, regardless of what whatever brand it is, if it's Samsung or that Oppo, <laughs> the Yip Yip Oppo one or whatever that shit is, or an LG or whatever, they all use um USB C to charge. But then you have Apple who uses Lightning. That's anti competitive, basically. That's why they lost that lawsuit. And that's why in Europe, iPhones will now have USB C. And I hope I'm hoping that comes to America too, because it, it improves competition, basically, instead of walling shit off. iPhone and so horribly with anything else. It already so came. It already came. Okay. I got an old phone. To people I got a 13. So it's on the 15 or the 14, whatever the new so one. Another example is the whole blue bubbles. And green bubbles. Thing. I'll probably upgrade maybe next year. I've already made an entire video about this dynamic. If you haven't already seen it, I'll leave hit. a link with the like button below if you want to watch What's it. Up, buddy? But basically, today, when iPhones message other iPhones, they have tons of features and What's typing that, indicators up, and high res media, and those are blue What's bubbles. Up, and when they message Android phones, What's it falls up, back to SMS, which is What's slow, up, low res, unencrypted trash that is green bubbles. <laughs> And Apple just refuses to make Such iMessage thing. work on Android. The Department of Justice actually literally references a video of Tim Cook on stage at a conference where he, he says this. It's tough uh, not to make it personal, but I can't send my mom certain videos or she can't send me certain videos. And so we leave Buy your mom an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that, I do think that's problematic that if you record a video on an iPhone and try to send it to an Android, it degrades the fuck out the quality and that's on purpose. That is kind of you're kind of stifling competition on that one it's mad shitty and this this is so poetic. when this opened up for like consoles to get sued no nah, i don't think so that's something completely different because we're talking about an everyday device that's needed in people's lives versus a video game console you know obviously also there's no dominant there's no dominant force in video games um the market is a little bit more split compared to here where he was saying that 80 88 percent of people in america have iphones like it's very clear i mean like it, it's to the point where like I remember when iPhone and Android first came out, it was more common to fought, find somebody with an Android. It's I, I only know one person in my contact that has an Android. It's very rare to run into it now. He's got this smile of like, you guys all know it's true. But also it goes back to what I said at the beginning, which is with any of these public facing decisions, there's the answer that they give the public. And then there's the real reason. You know, originally iMessage was built back in the days where text messages were basically paid per text. Like every SMS cost money, hence the green. So iMessage would work no, over Oh really, I gotta send photos and, and videos on WhatsApp to my mom. offer way more That's features. Crazy. And they'd build onto it over time. Gotta use signal, signal, signal. Encryption and reactions and typing indicators, all this stuff. And Apple people and Apple themselves would probably all agree like this is it's just a thing that Apple built that's way better yeah, than SMS. Android. Like, it's not their fault SMS sucks. They just made a better thing. Uh, so, yeah, of course. Yeah, they're going to build their, their own version of a thing, and it's not illegal. Here's something I wish I knew before I was in my 30s. There's an easy way to share high-quality images and videos from Apple to Android phones. By the way, apparently this feature has been available since 2017. 2017. I wonder why none of us noticed. Go into your settings on your iPhone, scroll down to camera, select formats, and then select most compatible. Share your photos and video. I feel like that setting should be on by default. Um, what's the name? To be honest, what's so bad about Android? Green isn't a bad color. There's nothing wrong with Android phones. I literally told you it's a cultural thing. He said he does like Russ. <laughs> that's not Russ. That's Bus. That's Tuss. Uh, Gus. <laughs> Gus. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with Android phones. I'm telling you, at least stateside, it's a cultural thing. And I'm going to be honest because I don't, I, I don't want to get into the conversation. But from my experience, it's more of one demographic in the United States than the other when it comes to the iPhone. Like I said... It's hard to date as a man if you don't got an iPhone. I feel like some men just got an iPhone because because <laughs> you kind of have to have one to play the game. <laughs> oh, shit. And why they think that way, I don't know. They just made their own thing for the iPhone.
But also, Tim Cook's quote, just buy your mom an iPhone, is the other equally valid point. It's the real reason. There are plenty of internal emails that have surfaced over time with Apple executives openly talking about how giving iMessage to Android would make it easier for people to switch to Android from the iPhone. iMessage is clearly one of the walls of the ecosystem, and it's, it's probably one of the biggest, thickest walls. Like, ask any young person in the US today why they use an iPhone. I think a lot of them would probably tell you something to do with iMessage. So is this stuff that they're doing illegal, I guess is the question. What you want. Uh, or maybe even another way to phrase it is, is Apple making you, you other products hug? worse or are you they making their own products oh. really good and oh. then not letting other things outside the ecosystem Hi. have access to those things? It's kind of both, honestly. Somebody needs but the hug. thing is, they're not the only ones doing You're a lot okay. of this stuff. They are You're just the okay. ones that happen to be in this pseudo monopoly position right now. Like the Pixel Watch, for example, does not work at all with the iPhone. It just works perfectly with Smart Android dog. phones. But is a anybody that mad about that? Ooh, you know, RCS guy. is announced to be coming to the iPhone at some Big point shoulders. in 2024, but I can almost guarantee it'll probably still be green bubbles. It will probably be the absolute bare minimum of supporting RCS. Right. And it and, will probably still. And they'll be like, but we got, are you trying to talk to the people? You want to talk to him? No. Oh, okay. It's gonna be the bare minimum, like he said. They're gonna bring RCS to Apple, and then it's gonna be like, see, see, we got it, but it's not even gonna have the functionality we, that, that's needed. We'll be delineating very clearly between iPhone to iPhone, iMessage, and iPhone to Android, something else. And there's even more. Now the J Sam with the sub, appreciate Apple it. There's another one. How no other services can use the NFC chip on the iPhone. Um, so I think having an iPhone for the girls is just an online thing. I don't think that's a real thing. I could be. No, nah, you're definitely wrong. It's a it's a real thing. It's a real thing. And like I said, like I said, it's one demographic that preferences the iPhone more than the other. And let me tell you something about men. Men go where the women are. So it's called adapting. Uh, but it's, it's definitely a thing. There's literally been people in the chat that said, I got it for the chicks. I've had people deny me because I had an Android. It's, it's a very real thing. I've seen it firsthand. <laughs> Super apps is another one. Like if you want to look at all this stuff, I will link the best stuff I can find down below. So my take is Apple is technically, yeah, guilty of all of these things. They're doing all this stuff. But in the walled garden analogy, it's kind of like insane they actually. Have built up a really, really nice garden. And Apple would say, like, look, our garden, it's so green and luscious and beautiful. They've built To be fair though, I think um I think the appeal of the iPhone is the simplicity. That's why they love it too, especially older people too. It's just kind of the simplicity. It's how I'm so happy to be married. One thing I will give, one thing I will say, despite like Androids being good phones, as someone who's played with both, Android is still very. It has a cumbersome UI. It sucks. Uh, that's the reason. That's the reason because I've been Android. I was Android for a very long time. I think my first one was the S2, the Galaxy S2, and I went all the way up to like the six or some shit like that. And then, like, I just kind of got tired of it. Like, I just wanted something that made calls and texts. So for a lot of people, it's just the simplicity of it all. Some people just want to make calls, FaceTime, text, maybe airdrop some some nudes or something. <laughs> most beautiful Shout out to Jay with the sub. With the most people in it. But they've also built up the biggest walls. No, it's for sure a real thing. Garden. As someone who works with people on their phones every day, the simplicity is the main reason why. Yeah, like I feel like that's one thing that like gets really lost in the conversation. Android niggas be riding so hard for Android, and like as someone who's tech savvy and used both, Android is a cumbersome US UI still. Uh, King, shout out to King Code with the sub. And the unfortunate thing is, Android's been around for so long, and they still really haven't fixed much of that issue. Uh, and then like Android users, I feel like a lot of them don't understand. They'll be like, "Well, that's the appeal of it. You can do everything you want with it." Exactly, which appeals to who? enthusiasts most people are not tech or phone enthusiasts most people just want to make a fucking phone call they don't care about none of that shit bro so i think that's i i i i understand where android users come from but i don't feel like android users understand where iphone people come from it's not that basically I, for an iphone user it's not that deep dog <laughs> and so apple would love to say look everyone's in our garden and like i said that's why i switched to iphone great it is i was like but even if you i used to be computer. i used to be a super tech enthusiast into phones like i said i used to bro i remember one day i was riding when i lived in dc i, I used to take the two two trains and two buses to work i had i forgot what samsung phone i had whichever one it was i installed 
I was the guy that was installing not only Cyan and Jamad, but I installed a Cyan and Jamad nightly on my phone because I wanted the latest features. I was an enthusiast of Android. I installed a nightly on my phone in the morning right before I caught the train and my phone bricked on the way to work. So I had to hard reset that shit because it wouldn't start. I was panicking, bro. And I think that was one of the moments where I was like, yeah, like what what am I even doing this for? <laughs> I think I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna get an iPhone, bro. All the maps just to use for pretty much. What app are you talking about? Cyan and Jamad? It was it was a way to uh completely hack your phone and give a whole new UI and shit. Softer, better garden somewhere else. The walls to escaping to Shout get out to Koopa with the sub. Are just way too high. So it's less that each individual thing that they're doing with the products working well together is illegal and it's more I disagree. That iPhones run off a lot of gestures and swipes that aren't explained at all to someone who's never had an iPhone before. You're kind of proving my point though. You you are right. It does have the the gestures and the swipes are there for people who want to learn and use it, but you're kind of still proving the point because I, my argument was the main reason why it's so mainstream is people love the simplicity. They just want to call and text. And you just acknowledge most people don't even know how to use the swipes, yet they still love it. That proves, basically, that shows that the iPhone is intuitive. And that was always the design philosophy of Steve Jobs, and they've maintained that through the Tim, the Tim Cook era. It's all about intuitiveness. All that stuff is just bonus. It's there. They don't need to learn it to work the phone. They feel like they have to do something about this one company having so much power and control in smartphones, which is here, it's it's essentially- a I ain't never used a gesture on my iPhone. I don't care about that shit. <laughs> so I wanna leave you with this. You remember at the beginning when I talked about how Apple's ridiculously dominant in the US and these crazy numbers, like 90% of young people. The crazy thing is they're super, super popular here. Is it but niggas just don't read? They are not it, it, a monopoly. It, it's definitely else. explained. And why why my thing is like i'd argue they don't have to read it like you guys gotta remember these are it's not your phone like <laughs> it's their phone you can't tell somebody how to use their 1200 dollars phone it's their phone as long as they're happy with it bro no this is this is the key to being successful in any business you have to remove your ego you don't get to tell people how to use their shit like <laughs> they, so they bought it and they're doing all the same stuff in other places but they're not a monopoly in other places and so i think of china for example china china is another huge smartphone market where wechat is kind of like this super super app it's a huge thing like it's messaging it's payments it's also calling it i think it's more i'd argue stock android is just as intuitive nowadays the problem is most people think samsung one ui or the touch whiz when they think android i agree i, I think it has gotten better um although because i have a i have one of those flip phones when i had that samsung sponsorship it did take me a second to adapt to it because i was so used to iphone i still think it's a little bit more cumbersome than iphone but what i will give you is i do think android has gotten better I think one of the issues, the uphill battle that Android does face in the United States is there is a stigma to it. And that stems from the fact that it stumbled out the gate. Like the thing is like a certain demographic sees that you have an Android, they just assume you're poor. Where does that stem from? Because when Android first came out, I, since the iPhone one, it's always been smooth. The original Androids were very slow. They were very clunky. The UI sucked. The touch screens were ass. The phone, the whole joke with like the um the phone looking like um the pictures looking like security footage is because they really used to look like security footage up until maybe like five years ago. <laughs> like so, like we can't. I feel like that's one part of the argument that Android forget Android users forget that motherfucker came stumbling out the gate. You saw the vision, but it came stumbling out the gate and it was more for enthusiasts. And the unfortunate thing that people have to realize is you can't make a first impression twice, especially when these first impressions cost a thousand dollars plus. Um, does it suck that more people are not informed about the Android? Sure. But once again, it's not your place to tell people how to spend their money or how much they should care about cell phones. Because for some people, the cell phone is just for calling and texting to do business or whatever, you know? taxi and also paying your bills and ordering food groceries yeah, oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> and the battery falling out the back i forgot about that shit oh shit the battery falling out the back oh my god 
the room. Am I the only one who liked the Windows phone? <laughs> yes, nigga. Yes. That the only the only UI worse than Android is the Windows phone. That shit was ass. Kind of doesn't really matter. It's oh uh, shit! And the so battery falling out the back. <laughs> incredibly vibrant, innovative landscape of all these smartphone manufacturers competing like crazy, like Huawei, Xiaomi, Oppo. And iPhone is in there too, but they're all just competing <laughs> ruthlessly with hardware features and with other stuff to try to get your attention to maybe pick their. Don't phone. forget when Samsung. Oh yeah, see, <laughs> I, yeah, we can't forget about that either. Don't forget Samsung phones were exploding on planes. There is a reason why. Like I feel like yeah, I feel like Android users have like revisionist history <laughs> them bitches was exploding on phone with uh on fucking uh in the airport and shit that shit was fucking funny what up Ziri? because <laughs> it's just what you're into they all have wechat a note so a note out. seven almost took out CeeLo green yeah <laughs> your phone based on if it's oh, actually better or not meaning there's lots of gardens and very few walls around those gardens that's what a good competitive landscape looks like. Now, what would be maybe illegal or a, a wrong thing to do? Samsung got people WeChat, on the terrorist watch the list. <laughs> WeChat, Tencent made a phone, and then they gave their phone special access to certain parts of WeChat. How does the phone even order. explode? It was there were unstable lithium batteries that they had, um, and they were causing the batteries to expand and then eventually explode. Like people's cars were on fire. One exploded on a plane. <laughs> get then. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, they were rushing the phones to market. They weren't testing them, bitches, bro. Suit and all this legal versus illegal stuff. <laughs> it's mainly just a way to try to poke some holes and get closer to that level of lower walls and more competition that makes everybody better. Then we're actually competing on innovation again. But it's something that will be evolving for a long time over. You time. should look so up that video of CeeLo Green. It's wild. And speaking of things, is that, that is that is that like safe to watch on stream? Shout out to D. I've never D. seen that before. I never seen that before. Is that safe to watch? Oh shit! CeeLo Green Android phone explode. Yeah, it's studio. CeeLo CeeLo's phone explodes. Oh shit! Do 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 do. Please more tech videos, not gaming. This is awesome. Con I, I do tech sometimes when there's like interesting stuff to talk about. Oh, there's no audio. <laughs> Dad, this nigga trying to make, look. See, he's this is one of those people I was talking about. See, he's just in the studio. His mom or his girl probably call him maybe his kids. How you doing, daddy? I'm doing good. <laughs> Fucking head exploded. This shit. Man, just trying to make some beats, bro. Trying to make some music. When does it happen? He having fun on his Android though. <laughs> That's crazy. Is that a GTA 5 mission? That's fucking crazy, dude. I didn't even know this happened. <laughs> that nigga's phone. That, that nigga, uh, baby, I'll be home at 8 p.m. Granada! Knock that nigga out cold. And then y'all wonder why. Why niggas like it? Like, why niggas like iPhones? This is why. <laughs> this is why. And this is and this nigga fell on the floor. Is he okay? Is, is CL Green okay? Motherfuckers be wondering why motherfuckers like iPhones, because the iPhone don't do this. <laughs> That's fucking funny. He said, can we fact check this? <laughs> Oh no, he felt like Peter Griffin. Oh my god, dude. Read the comments. 1.3 million dollar recording studio and a camera with no audio. <laughs> Reminds me of the GTA 5 mission with life in man. <laughs> Some people say he's still laying there. He was listening to my mixtape. The hackers from Watch Dogs got my nigga CeeLo Green. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Oh my god, this is funny. <laughs> you shouldn't laugh because like yo, he could have got hurt, but he's alright, right? I told you he was almost out for real. They almost got my man Elo, bro. They almost got my man. That couldn't have been a Samsung. That had to have been the Oppo one or that OG or some shit. So with people, I do agree. Like Android, to be serious for a second, Android phones have gotten a lot better. 
but like we cannot ignore history. They've gotten a lot better in the last five years. It had a very rough start. <laughs> and that's why some people have a perception that Android is for broke people because it it kind they kind of weren't that great at first. Uh it was more for like computer kind of tech enthusiasts. Fourth of July came early for them. So that's why and you can't change people's first impressions or perceptions of things, which is unfortunate. But it kind of is the way that it is. He said, nah, replay that video. Nah, you replay it, bro. What the fuck? Search it. Then they had to do a callback. Yeah, they did. <clears throat> Everyone talking about the Google Pixel cameras. Yeah, I heard they're really good. Also, keep in mind, Apple products in general have been consistently better over the years. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's It's just been consistent.